All right, right, I think we have this set up now. Hi, welcome, welcome back. back. We're, We're in chapter three. three. We're talking about two herbal data. data. I'll show you the cover sheet for this, but in the previous video, I tossed it across the room and I forgot to go grab it. Anyway, um, one of the main data gathering things that we end up using in the main idea, real life example, experience that we do is in this chapter, we throw a Barbie, a Barbie doll off of a stairway. In our case, it's a third floor stairwell that you can go all the way down the first floor. And the goal there is to tie her up to a bungee cord made out of rubber bands and hopefully have her come very close but not actually hit the floor because, you know, a dead Barbie is not a good Barbie. So um, the way we end up doing this is that um, we give you seven rubber bands and a Barbie doll. You can bring in your own if you have one at home. Go ahead and try it. And we pick up and we're going to use those seven um, rubber bands to get data to figure out then how can we extrapolate that out to the 15 plus meter third floor stairwell. So from there what we're going to end up doing is this. So I grabbed some data here. I apologize for these scratch out. Um, I had to adjust things a little bit. So with zero rubber bands, the Barbie doll, which is just about a foot tall, it's actually I think most of them are about 11 and a half inches, fall down about, you know, so that's going to be your 30 centimeters. And then with each rubber band down there, you know, a varying amount of bounce went down. So like the first rubber band, a lot of them go down 34 and a half. And we did this with the nearest half centimeter just because when Barbie's falling and bouncing back up, it, 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 it's a very quick thing. So anyway, so we got 38 and a half, 42, 46, 50.5, 56, and 60. Okay. And so first thing is we're going to review some things from before and what's the explanatory variable and what's the response variable. Okay. So explanatory variable here is going to be the number of rubber bands. Why? Partly because that's what we control. Whatever you can change is going to generally be the explanatory variable uh, number of rubber bands. That's my explanatory. And then the distance traveled is going to be our response. And if you think about it, the more rubber bands we put on in response, if I could write it correctly, the more rubber bands we link up to Barbie, the further she should be able to fall. Okay. So, um, so there's explanatory response. We're going to get a little bit more specific to those a little later. And then, how many variables do we have in this case? Well, it's a two-unit variable unit. This is probably two. Yeah, good job. And are they quantitative or categorical? We're dealing with numbers. So this would be quantitative. Quantitative. So we're going to use the applet at staplet.com to go ahead and make this into a scatter plot. So let's jump over there. And so we need two quantitative variables. Sorry, we don't want the collaborative one. So explanatory is going to be number of rubber bands. Observations by space, so we've got zero and one and two and three and four. Response variable is distance traveled. For that, we had three. Double check my data. Okay, that's good. Do, 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 do. I have a two-screen set up now, so sometimes my mouse gets lost. And we have a fairly decent step plot. Is it perfect? No. But we're going to go through and we're going to plot that out. And now, obviously, if you were doing this in real life in class, you would end up having everybody would have different data, which is fine. I mean, that's the way the stats works. Okay. So one, two, three. It's seven. And then this is travel. And 
We have all our little numbers here. So we go up to 60, so it looks like we're counting by fives. Remember to label your axes, otherwise people get mad. You lose points, et cetera, et cetera. And then we go through and we have our dots. And last thing which we haven't done yet is we're going to just a number of rubber bands. Versus distance traveled. It's only traveled during our night. My apologies. My, My wife, wife would be very upset she was an editor in a previous life. Um, and an English major. So, great. Now, now we know how to graph. Mr. Hayes, are you going to do that? Yeah, yeah but again, it's, it's one, one of those things where we're taking what you know and we're putting it into a stats context. Okay? So, so describe the relationship of the scatter plot. plot. So let's, let's go back here for a second. So, so what's, what's going on? You've got... It's increasing. You might say there's a positive slope. Um, what shape are they in? So what ends up happening is when we come back here, the things that you want to focus on, make sure we're on the screen, you want to multiply on, focus on the direction. You want to focus on any unusual features. Unusual. You want to Form. We'll talk about these here in a second. Strength. Okay. Form is going to be is it linear? Is it parabolic? Does it look the that type of thing? So the dots are are they increasing or decreasing? That's basically this here. So increasing. They form a tight, as again, notice, when it goes up, okay, a tight linear pattern. Okay, that talks about, I'll get to that in a second, and there are no unusual features or outliers. So again, notice, okay, so right here is my direction. This right here is my strength. This is my form. And then right here, there are no unusual outliers. So that's to see if there's any unusual features. And sometimes people use dust as a way to remember that. If it's helpful for you, go ahead. But again, again direction, direction, unusual features, form, and strength of the four areas that you need to use when you're describing a scatter plot. So now we're going to jump over to the formalized part, which I'll see you in a minute. Links below if you need it. Talk to you soon.